Hello and welcome to week 39 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and we're going to take a break now from talking about the web farm we've been talking about the last few weeks and get into a key troubleshooting tool that hopefully you find beneficial if you haven't been using it already and that's Log Parser. Log Parser is a tool from Microsoft. It's a free download that allows us to take apart various parts of the operating system, logs being one, but event viewer and other areas, and to really digest it, to search, to filter, to query, and to really find out more about our systems. It's an excellent troubleshooting tool and an excellent way to find out a lot of things proactively too. For example, we can find all 500 errors, all failures on the server, or all pages that took longer than 10 seconds to load. Very easy to do so, or reasonably easy to do so, I guess. There's just a little bit of a learning curve, depending on how well you know SQL and some of the syntax. The log parser, it's extremely fast. Uh, you can take huge amounts of logs and it can parse through it in incredible rates. Extremely powerful. Uh, today I'm just going to get a getting started. I'll show you a lot of the power of it, but there is a lot more that I won't be able to cover in these few minutes. And extremely free, uh, or completely free. It's free for you. So you can uh, download it free of charge. Uh, it hasn't been updated in years. I think the last update was 2005. But apart from a couple minor things, it's still completely relevant and very useful for us today. I think every web administrator, in fact, every server administrator, not just web administrator, should be familiar with this tool. So what types of logs and what types of situations can it deal with? So let me cover these briefly before we jump in further. Um, of course, IIS logs, and in my opinion, that's probably the most useful. Uh, event viewer, you can query directly against event viewer. You can filter by various, any, any of the criteria in Event Viewer. Uh, the registry, if you want to search and find certain things in the registry, you can do that. You can search against XML, uh, from or to a database, a custom CSV files. And another useful feature is you can have checkpoints. So let's say you want to query against a massive database once every five minutes. You want to pull the results and dump anything relevant to another file, uh, whether it be a chart or a graph or something else. And you don't want log parser to have to start from the beginning of that log. There's a checkpoint option in log parser that allows it to jump to exactly where you left off. Uh, very useful for parsing really large log situations. So log parser can be used for one-off situations for troubleshooting, more of what I'll show you today, but you can also script it and use it for ongoing operations. You can combine logs from multiple servers into a single server. I've done that with log parser. Very useful that way. You can also do nightly reports against the logs and kick off an email, generate a report and then kick off an email. Uh, the, the email is not kicked off from log parser, but you can do that easily with from the command line or some other tool. So as you can see, the sky is the limit as long as you understand that some of the capacity that log parser offers us. So let's get started. Um, first, I would mention that it is something that I fully trust on a production server. There, I mean, there will be a little bit of overhead as you're going through some large files, but I've never seen it overpower a uh, server, uh, not the, to my recollection, even when going through some really large files. It has no problem doing that. So what we want to do is let's open up a web browser. And if we go here to... Uh, just to any search engine, let's search for log parser. And here at the top result, in to, at this time anyways, log parser 2.2, and again, it hasn't been updated since April 2005, but again, don't let that scare you off at all. So we can download this, and it's tiny, it's about a meg or so, and run it. Now, what I do on a production machine, this is safe, it really just extracts and copies it to the server. So it is safe on a production machine, but just the same, I usually have policies that I don't run an installer on a production machine. So what I usually do is install this on another one and then I X copy it over. But that's up to you what you want to do there. So we run this installer. Okay, that's finished and you can see how rapid it is. I'm, I've got it completely installed there and what, probably a quarter of a minute or half a minute or so. So now what we can do, it's a command line tool by default and uh, although I'm going to show you a UI option later on, but it's good to be familiar with the command line part of it because on a production machine I don't want to necessarily install this UI thing. If I'm doing some quick troubleshooting that just takes 10 minutes, I'll usually just use log parser direct from the command line. Otherwise if I'm spending more time on it then I want to use a more powerful tool that allows me to digest because you're usually troubleshooting between a whole bunch of different rules. So we need to find it here. Program files x86 log parser and then we have just a few things in here. 
Uh, oh, I didn't do the full install. Oh, yeah, I did. It's samples. Okay, so under samples, there's a huge amount of samples if you want to dig in further, uh, including not just single queries, but entire scripts. A couple things here. We can go to log parser, the CHM, and you have full help. So you can search by anything here. You can go to the contents and, uh, you know, lots of details here in the help if you want to use this. Although I usually use the command line. It depends on what I'm doing. I'll show you that too. So let's start off with just a simple example. And let's do log parser. And what we're going to do is let's say select top 10 asterisks, so everything, all columns, from application. And this is actually a keyword that goes to the application log. So enter. And you can see it's pulled in. Of course, it's not too di digestible yet, but it's pulled in everything from Event Viewer. In fact, we can output that. Let's just use standard command line stuff. Let's output that to the clipboard. Open up here in Notepad. And you can see the information here, event log, log, time generated, time written. And we can filter. Actually, let's filter by just event type 4, for example. So now we can use a where clause. So we can say where event type not equal to 4. So we do that. That dropped to the clipboard. We paste it. And now we see everything that's not event type 4. So we have zeros and twos in here. And so zeros being the successes, twos being the warnings, and we could of course filter those to errors and everything else. I believe the error is one. We can give that a quick try. So event type equals one. And yeah, so our error events looks like I have some SQL Express issues here. If I wanted to troubleshoot and look through those right now. So very powerful for event viewer. Now we have another keyword for IIS. So again, log parser, and we could say select top 10 asterisk from, and then we can put the website name within these uh, angle brackets. And let's just do that. And now we're able to pull. What it did is it actually located, went to IIS, found the name of the site, found the location of the log files, and started looking through it here. And so that's all we had to type and is able to find it. Now, disclaimer, um, and in fact, I didn't realize this until I was just prepping for this and ran into it for the first time on one of the, this current machine, I did not have the IS6 MetaBase compatibility enabled. And turns out that this shortcut does not work unless you have that. So let me just show you that briefly. If I go to uh, Programs and Features on my computer, turn Windows Features on and off, and go expand out Internet Information Services, Web Management, and IS6 compatibility, this bottom one here, IS MetaBase IS6. There's really no disadvantage that I can think of to install that, so feel free to install that and it gives you some more capability. But you don't have to. That's just for the shortcut method here. What you can also do is find the path directly. So here's the path to the log files, and what I can do is instead, and this is, allows you not just the existing log files, is I can do, you know, asterisk.log. You can see you can use a wildcard in there and see it does the exact same thing. And of course, this example, I just have one log file in here uh, that I've kind of cleaned up as a good example here. But you know, you could filter it too to you know u underscore ex the eleven the ninth month. And so that's going to get only things that are in September of this month here. So it just becomes quite useful that way. Now you can see the information here. Of course, is not. It's, it's a mess, right? There's a lot of it. So what you want to do is find the column names, and you can filter by just particular column names that you want to search for, rather than everything here. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty useless when it's that garbled, in, especially in the command prompt here. So there's a couple ways to do this. One is just like this. Scroll up to the top. Just select top one or something like that. And you can then select these. Um, another way is you can go to the actual log file itself. And you can see here, at the top of many of the log files, you can see that uh, well, an IS, for example, outputs this, and you can see the name. Uh, you can also go to the help, and I'll show you in a couple minutes how to navigate the help. And another trick is with some output stuff. And so let me show you this. Outside of the quotes, so the query you keep in quotes, but now outside we can do an output, colon, and then the, the various types we can use, for example, is a data grid. And so this of course, we put on the other screen. Let me move this over here. Okay, so now we have this data grid that has all of the columns and all of the information here, and very useful. 
So we could do potentially next 10, of course I just selected 10. So now what I'm going to do is let's make this more narrow. So if I look at those columns and say, you know the columns that I really want to have is let's say time, the client IP, the URI stem, which is uh, the, the actual URL, uh, the URL, not the query string, but the actual path, and SC status, you can see this pattern here of the CS, the client, the client server and the server client, and time taken, very useful. So now, when I run this, I'm only showing the columns that I want to see. You can start to see this is getting more and more powerful as and useful as we move along. So now we can see a lot of different queries. We have 200 statuses. We have 304s, which means it's found. It's just cache. It says a, back to the client. Uh, you don't have to download it again. You already have it. And time taken. And of course, time taken being very useful. In fact, let's now do this. Let's say where. Let's do a where clause now. Where time taken. Now, if you're not familiar with the SQL syntax, then you would uh, you're going to have to just pay a little bit of attention to the syntax here, but if you know SQL already, of course this is very natural, very easy to do. It's just, it's almost identical to the SQL that we know on our database servers. So where time taken is greater than, let's say, five seconds, which would be 5,000 milliseconds. And so now we're able to see uh, the time taken on, a num okay, so we have a problem here with our shop details to page. Company profile has a 500 and a slow loading page. But these ones here, sometimes we get 500 status and sometimes 200. So we have some troubleshooting that we need to do. And of course, this is immediately making it apparent what things we need to start digging into. Okay, let me show you two more things from the command prompt before we move back to the GUI. And I want to show you, or, or to the GUI, and I'll show you some details there. One, notice that it did not place this in the path. So you have a couple options there. If it's on a production server, I'm usually just doing it temporarily, and I'll just navigate to this path. But if you're doing this often, using it, you may want to either add this path to the to your system path, and uh, you're, you're probably familiar with how to do that. But you go to right-click on my computer, get you your properties, and then of course you go into your advanced system settings, and into your environment variables, and you have some paths here, so you can set it there. Uh, the other way you do is, is some people just copy. So if you do a dir, it's only the logparser.exe that's needed. It's a standalone file. So you can copy that to your systems32. And in fact, let's just do that for the fun of it. So copy logparser.exe to SQL and Windows system32, which is already in the system path. So now I could be anywhere, and I can say so I can say log parser select top one asterisk from default website. You can see how easy that is from anywhere in your system. So that's another option to do that. The other thing we want to do now, of course, the disadvantage here is I don't have my tab for log parser. I have to type out the whole word. So log parser and just hit enter. It gives us the help and some useful stuff here. This is you want to get used to the log parser's help. Uh, the one is your input formats. There's a bunch of different ones. Here's the one that we were using. It automatically figured out from the logs, but it doesn't always. And so, of course, event. I did it from select asterisk from system it pulled it there, but uh, you sometimes you have to actually specify the input type if you can't guess. Um, the output type, and you can see I use the data grid already. Uh, there's, you know, the command line was one of the output formats. And, oh, just for the fun of it, let's try this Nero view. If you like the matrix, this is just for fun. And, for in fact, I'm having too much fun here if I'm spending too much time on this. But let's try this. Uh, let's pull 50 results. And what we're going to do is we're going to do output Nero view, and what we have here, amazingly, built into log parser is this. Now, whether it's practical or not, I'm not sure where you're going to find the practical use, uh, but except to show it off in situations such as this. So that's an output format. Now, one other thing I want to mention, it's very important actually, is if I do 50, look at this, it only shows 10 at a time when I do it from the command line and also with the data grid. So what you can do is you, there's another command which is rows to print. I never remember this. I have to write it down. Rows to print, colon, and so rather than 10, of course, you could do 1,000 or you could do a negative 1. turns it off. So now what happened is it printed all 50 rows without that annoying break between each one. And, you know, it allows you, you know, you could still do a more command and manage it yourself. But this is very useful, and especially if you output to the data grid. 
and so you can see now it listed all 50 without having to without having to hit this next 10 which is an option that's there and so you can see there's some other help that's very useful here too you can see the functions and they're actually very powerful log parser dash h functions and there are tons uh, to you know get uppercase lowercase you got some string parsing you got some system time related things and you have a lot of math built in extracting out the extensions and URLs all of this is available to you and we also see here uh, that you have some input and output details can be found with this syntax here so it'd be log parser dash h dash i colon event evt for example and now you have some details here's your your field names and some other information well i realize that i am running out of time there's so much to cover here so let's go and i want to show you another tool that you may find very useful and this is log parser lizard now it is free now they ask if you use it to pay for it um i have only started using it just yesterday i downloaded it and have been playing with it and just kind of preparation for this and to see if I want to use it longer term. I'm quite impressed, actually really impressed. Yeah, it's a great product here. So what it is, um, I've downloaded it. It's a quick download. The log parser has to be installed already and of course .NET has to be installed. It leverages that. And you can see the flexibility, for example, Event Viewer. You know, let's do count events uh, from system and we run this. Well now you can see I have tons of informational events and not of the other kind. So this is useful, just the default ones, but you can change it however you want. Uh, you can see the IS ones. There's a lot of different examples here, and you can grab, you know, ASP errors, for example. Here you go. So they have a real nice example for you. But you don't have to use their example. You can keep working with whatever kind of queries that you want to do. So let's actually go to have this handy. Here we go. So we're going to do it here in this tool instead, and we can do a new query. So, of course, you can't do these output types. Those are built within the product. So, it basically, you're just doing the query part, and you use their tools for everything else. So, select the top 50 here. You can hit Run, and notice it doesn't stop at 10. The rows to print, it automatically uh, changes that for you. So, now we can filter exactly what we wanted, just like we did before. So, we can do time, you know, CIP, time taken, and SC step. No, I don't, the auto complete keeps throwing me off on this. Probably my fault, I'm sure. But okay, yeah, did it here again. Okay, so now we see this is a lot more useful. Of course, it's not useful if it doesn't tell me the file. So we want to do a CS URI stem, and now we can see the information. So let's just real briefly um, show a couple filters that we could do. So we can say where time taken is greater than uh, let's say five seconds again and SC status I think the problem is that uh, the dash is a special key in the IntelliSense and it throws this off so I think it's just a little bit weak on the IntelliSense but SC status is equal to 500 so now what we're getting is all 500 status there's only 13 in this example, of course, this is only a portion of a day. And oh, look at this. They are all occurring at 12.06 a.m. Uh, so interesting. So what's happening is whatever issue is occurring, it's occurring in a pattern. And very useful to finding issues on your server. You know, or even just pulling this out. Uh, again, we run this and look, we have a very similar trend. Yeah, in fact, it's all at this exact same time. So, and all of our slow running pages are. So what I'd probably do now is I would filter by the time and look at the pattern just prior to this, what could have triggered it and allow me to narrow it down. Well, I am out of time and you can, as you can see, I've just skimmed the surface on all that's available, but there is so much available here. I hope you find it useful and uh, feel free to use, you know, of course you can use whatever tools you want here. Log parser, there are some other GUI options available. And this is one, uh, some powerful tools for importing and exporting the queries, the modes, the, the displaying, the charts. That, you know, of course, you, this one here doesn't make a very useful chart, but certain things can make great charts for you. Uh, hope you find this useful and add it to your toolkit because I think it'll, every web administrator needs to be very familiar with this tool.